Welcome back to the channels Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Let us keep the reading of my book Cluders, Mare Pop Beyond the Cloud, available on Amazon. In this part we will keep the reading of the chapter for seven months, one more film and all is well. Or is it? Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Let's go. His first impression was that it was a simple blog of girlish things, with texts about movies, exams, tips, and studies. But then, he got caught up consulting the blog almost every day, reading the comments and questions, waited for my answers, and then he felt like watching the movies I criticized with my own peculiar point of view. He then said that he researched a bit about me and by the texts on the blog found out where I lived in and what school I was studying in. All this obsession about a dream? I asked. It looks like this, right? But it's not that simple. I think I know how it is. I did not want to tell him about my own experience with dreams slash messages, but you must remember how I was when I started to hear voices and dream about messages from the future. In the following weeks, he convinced his mother that he would dwell better in our city after she went to Uruguay. He even gave her the name of the school, which he wished to be transferred to. It was easy for her to agree, because as I said, is one of the best in the country. Provided everything was ready, it was enough for him to come, to settle, and to begin to approach me. Note, this part you already know. He said he was a fan of my blog, etc. All it needed was to fill in some gaps. The pizza arrived. We started eating and commenting trivially on the movie Divergent. The deep message was still the same as that of the Hunger Games, and as I had said, the central female character set the tone of the new era of empowerment for us girls. Of course, boys saw other things than women's strength in the face of oppression. Perhaps this is why the disagreement between me and Marcos at the beginning on the subject, men do not see themselves oppressed, because they are not women. Is it? The actress who played Triss is the same of the fault in our stars, isn't she? Asked Leandro between pizza bites. Yes, it's her. Her name is Shailene Woodley. I found her very expressive in both films, but I personally enjoyed Divergent more. Mare, he spoke with a slight laugh. You're a really exceptional girl. Who would have imagined a teenager preferring an action and science fiction movie to a mellow romance about passionate young men who have cancer and know they can die at any moment? Leo, what sexism is this? I laugh too. Know that I read that one of the reasons why so many books and action films and fantasy films centered on women are being made is precisely because cultural producers have detected that there is a large share of the female consumer market that felt excluded from this universe, simply for male caprice and lack of vision of the publishers and producers. I know that very well, my dear. He gave me a greasy and pepperoni-like kiss. I wiped my mouth and continued. It's great that now many of these large corporations are managed by women. At least it balances the thing a bit for our side. Okay, one day you'll be one of those powerful women. But coming back to the movie actress, I heard she was going to make another film based on another book by the same author of The Fault in Our Stars. Is not true. I also knew that, but it was a rumor. The book is Paper Towns, but it'll not be her. What a pity. I liked her in The Fault in Our Stars. I know. You think she's hot too? Well, that's truth, but I think she passes a mixture of sadness and hope. Truth. We continue to eat and talk. I thought about what he told me about the actress and the characters she interpreted. Sadness and hope were interesting and seemingly conflicting feelings. When you are sad, you may seem hopeless. But in fact, past that sense of despair and soon after overcome is an expressive art that most actresses cannot pass with credibility. In that aspect, Shailene Woodley, Triss, and Jennifer Lawrence, Katniss, left Kristen Stewart, Bella, in the slipper. Although the latter have had for sure love partners of much more weight in the film. Excuse me. 
The hormones are talking again. Note, I don't know if you are, but I'm laughing at myself now. Traveling in our time again, I remember that I connected this thought about sadness and hope with the rest of what Marcos told me still in that day, already near the end of my parents' party. His mother's farewell and the change of city left him sad, but full of hope in the expectation of accomplishing something with which he had committed himself. It was in narrating his second dream that things began to become even clearer for me. I was sitting on the couch again, watching a large television screen. A new YouTube video started loading on the screen. Was it the signal to his subconscious to know that a new message was coming from the future? The picture appeared in the form of a woman, like a shadow sitting in front of a neutral background. All he knew was that it was a woman because of the outline of her hair and the voice that made herself feminine, but her identity was a mystery. It said, Marcos, you have the difficult and important mission of keeping young Mare on track. If she begins to stray into the path of the system's challenging subversion, the whole future will be threatened to become a great chaos of endless civil war. Why would she listen to me? He thought with himself in the dream. The young mare is at a stage very susceptible to some influences. That's why we chose you, Marcos. What? Can you hear my thoughts? Actually, everything here is your thoughts because it is your subconscious. So yes, we can hear everything from your head when you are sleeping or unconscious. So explain to me why I was chosen and what I should do. The voice on the screen explained to him that I enjoyed the company of intelligent and insightful people. I would be envious of having a fan of my blog so interested in me. And finally, I was, like many girls at the time, half in love with the vampire Edward and he, Marcos, bore a certain resemblance to the actor-slash-character, as you have seen at the beginning of our adventure. Despite all the absurdity that seemed to me at that moment, I noticed the sincerity in Marcos's sad expression. His sadness reflected his frustration at not being able to avoid my positioning turn on my blog, but in addition, he also knew that our brief courtship was bound to end because it had all been based on outside programming. I wonder if there ever was any spontaneity in his actions. With a little watery eyes, he said that he did not plan to approach me like that. He just followed something that seemed right and that he really liked me. But it was late. His revelations and my own voices and dreams had already alerted me to that. I see today that we were both being plays in other people's games. We can still be friends, Marcos. We can investigate all this together. But there is no way we can continue to be a couple. I know, Mare. I never wanted to hurt you or seem to use you. I, I just thought I was doing the best for everyone, including you. And he was being honest. It was from there that I hoped that things would improve, despite the sadness at the moment of separation. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Continuing to support the channel's Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Subscribe, like, and share the video. Bye bye. <laughs>